We've got some cracking songs in there, and a lot of fans were a little bit nervous when they heard initially the rumours musical, right? But the numbers are extraordinary, and they're just a phenomenal way of exploring through sort of psychotic reveries, you know, in these terrific set pieces. That relationship between the two of you in this film. Um, well, you've seen it. Is it everything you expected? <laughs> 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 Tell them um, how you feel, Joaquin. Well, I was there. Yeah. I made the movie. You made the movie. So I did know what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, oh, God. What do you, it's so hard to talk about because, look, I think that we, uh, I feel like we achieved what we set out to do. Yeah. Um, and very early on, one of the things that we talked about with music, well, Stephanie talked about, Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> it's just warming up the pipes. I've already had clear liquor this morning, so we're fine. Was that for you? <laughs> just drink, just drink amongst yourselves. I knew you. Stop. Okay. You were taking it for yourself, and right. I stole it. No one's so, ever choked in an interview with me before, but that's a first. Well, they should all sit it's next funny to you should talk about uh, <laughs> choking or spitting up <clears throat> liquids when I'm talking or singing <laughs> because, <laughs> um, no, I think er early on, Stephanie was like, um, oh, we'll, we'll sing live. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe you will sing live because that's what you do, but there's no way that I'm singing live because I, I just I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but of course, she was ahead of me and she knew that the character doesn't know what he's doing. And we made this decision like, for me at least, and something that we talked about, in approaching the songs, it needs to feel like it's come from Arthur, like the reality of somebody that's grown up hearing these great American standards um, like on his mom's radio, and then just kind of singing it, but there's nothing polished about it. It should be rough around the edges, and it should feel like the visual was like a 14-year-old that's fallen in love for the first time and has no choice but to like sing his feelings. Yeah. Um, and I think that's when it kind of clicked for me. That became my approach. And I think for you, it was, you, you do so much because there's, there's moments that are feel very intimate and, and broken and then also some more bombastic and explosive moments as well. Yeah. I don't know how I became the interviewer now. I, <laughs> I was great. going to say, it was nice to meet you. Yeah, it nice to me. you. Thank you. It's been great. <laughs> Thank you. you were That's great. all we've got time for. <laughs> um, these songs are in your DNA. Um, how is it, and obviously you've reimagined them for, for the companion album, Harlequin. So, how is it for you getting under the skin of these songs again and reimagining those songs that are so much a part of our lives? I think I had a little bit of a different challenge because some of these songs I've sung like hundreds of times and they were something I was like deeply acquainted with and uh, in my own stage performances. So, I actually spent a lot of time with Joaquin trying to find a voice just for Lee, for my character, yeah. and really to kind of divorce all of my stage tricks or things that feel natural to me emotionally as a singer, because Lee's not a singer. And I think I wanted to find that same sort of authenticity that he was just talking about with Arthur. You know, how could a moment between them be a confession? How could it be coming from uh, a much more like naked and broken place that's unique to Lee and that sort of like storm inside of her? But then there's other moments where, you know, Arthur's fantasizing about this relationship. And, you know, there were, there were moments where I wanted to give Todd also something to work with. Like what if what if Arthur was imagining he was with this like amazing woman and maybe she could really sing and was an amazing performer. So we kind of had everything mm -hmm. to work with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like walking the line, forgive the pun, but it's that sort of thing between this, the Broadway bombast that you talk about mm -hmm. and these incredibly tortured souls that you have, you know, that, that meet in these delusional scenes. Um, inhabiting those characters, I think for you, um, 
going back to that, what, what was that like? Because I would imagine after you, it takes quite a lot of shedding to, to, you know, to lose that character when you've inhabited it. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that it does. But then I'm like, I should say that it does because then it sounds like I'm a really hardworking, committed actor. <laughs> or then maybe it seems like I f***ed up if, if I didn't shed it. I, so I don't know what to say anymore. Right. Um, but <clears throat> no, I, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Um, and I think also so much of what you see is the, the, the hard work of so many different people that are all off screen that are like working to give you the feeling that you have when you're watching the film, but you're seeing my face and so I get all the credit. And you're thinking like, oh, it must have been really hard, but sometimes, like sometimes you'll do a scene and you'll look at playback and just because of like the lens and the lighting and the color shirt that you have, you like I'll have a really powerful reaction to it. And I realize like, Oh, I'm like just a small part of like sure. why you actually have the feeling. That, that you is have. so true. We were so lucky to work with so many many gifted people on this film, and even in terms of, you know, working on the music every day, we each had a piano player with us that would accompany us off camera. So the music, in a lot of instances, was recorded live, and I mean, th this movie could not have gotten made without everybody being just so excellent at their jobs every day. That's a natural home for you though, isn't it? That the, the live music, that that process. Um, rubbling alongside a character that obviously is so deeply troubled, how was that in terms of you parking it at the door when you left? Oh, um, well, you know, I, uh, I don't, I, for me, like whenever I, I'm creating characters for stage or through music, like it always kind of stays with me in some kind of way. Like I think that's just part of the way I think about being creative, but I, I understand what you're saying. Like, but, but, uh, but actually I dropped the character immediately and uh, yeah. I never thought about <laughs> it again. But it's, both, get, thi it's yeah. both things and sometimes you, you're not even aware of it. Like I think if you are aware of it, then you're probably trying too hard and then it, you're not really embodying it. I think like when it does present itself in your life, you're not really aware of it. That just is, is yeah. your yeah. life. And, and that's what we're doing. Every day we are going to set and we're putting on these clothes and we are with the same group of people. So yeah. of course it has an influence on, on your life. But I think sometimes when we talk about it in the press, it sounds like this whole thing, you know. It's I, kind I'm of romanticized. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's 10 years to the week that we both met for the first time for a sit down to talk about Cheek to Cheek, and this was in Brussels, and you came up to me, you gave me the biggest hug. I'm meeting Lady Gaga, and I get this warmth, you know? And it, it was extraordinary moment also to be with Tony and to talk about those songs, all from the Great American Songbook, which brings me to the companion album, which it's is amazing. great. Yes, it's amazing. I know I've heard so little Have of it. it. I've heard I've heard a little bit of it, but of course, I mean, this is great because it's a further reimagining of the songs that are reimagined in the film, you know, for the most part. And again, as I say, there's songs that are part of the fabric of our lives and stuff like that. So congratulations, that must feel great. And yeah, I'm so excited the music's out and it was like, you know, just to kind of tie it a bit into what you were saying, like, there was so many ways that the character stayed with me just even in the way that I was thinking about music and I was so excited to uh, make a record that uh, reimagined all of these songs but you know without any genre in mind and uh, just like continuing to build the world of the movie. The, 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 the gravity of the, the movie for me was really strong and I, I just wasn't done with it. Well, the gravity is strong in this room. I'm firmly in your orbit. Thank you both very much indeed for taking the time today. We're champing a bit for that seventh album. Riddle me this, riddle me that. There's so many clues around, but we'll, well get Well, Joaquin's there. heard my whole seventh album, and he, uh, you should just follow him around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. About you did it. walk in here with your what, headphones what, on. Did I? Did I? <laughs> Listen, the gravity of this rock is pulling me in. I'm like, I, I can't, I can't. That, yeah, let's have a look at the eyes. Let's have a look at the eyes. Come on, don't be ashamed. <laughs> whip that out. Congratulations. Come on. Again, thank you. There it is. And there it is. Hey, thank you. Cheers, Thanks so really much. appreciate that. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. That's entertainment. Hey. Right? Perfect. She's got the pipes. Excellent. Yeah. Right? <laughs>